every one to this important occasion. And very shortly, we'll be starting the, the program. We just convert your patient, and uh, shortly, the program will commence. Thank you.
Thank, thank you. Thank you. I want to especially welcome everyone to this historic occasion and the maiden convocation of Angkor University. Without wasting time, I am going to invite the Pro Chancellor, Professor S.S. Dada, to please give us the opening prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this special day, a day you have approved to glorify yourself, a day we have prayed for and you have answered us. Let your name be glorified in all the things we are going to do this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a special day because you have decided that your glory will shine forth as the first graduating students will commence the program leading to their graduation. Father, we pray that this program will be ordered by you and that all that will come here today, tomorrow, and the next day, Lord, you bring them safely. The program will be successful. And as they go back, everything will work out according to your plan for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. As we commence this important program, guide us aright. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. While we will remain standing, we are going to take the national anthem followed by the university's anthem.
have a apologies on behalf of our technical team. For that technical problem. Thank you. On this note, I would like to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Ansel University. Deputy Vice Chancellor John C. Chancellor, sir, Pastor Dr. William Polo Okumuyi. Good afternoon, sir. I, be I believe it doesn't need any further introduction. It's our father, it's our chancellor, it's everything to us here. We are grateful, sir. And he's not here alone. He's here with her mommy. Mommy, you are welcome, Ma. God bless you, Ma. And we have some council members here seated. We have the NUC representative, Mr. Femi Yeye. We have Professor Abel Adebayo, all the way from Yola, Adamawa State, representing Northeast. We have Professor Kenneth Inadi from Oweri, representing Northeast. You are welcome, sir. We have our host community representative, is the our Monile landlord of this place, Professor Tunde Okwe Davis. <laughs> and we have the principal officers here represented. We have acting registrar, Pastor Salami, and then the bossa of the university. Dr. Adegbite, we have the coordinator of the library, Mr. Ugoko Christian, and we have the visiting vice chancellors that are here. I will start with uh, our neighbors, Professor Kolo is here from Crawford University. And I have the registrar of Elizabeth University, Mr. Omolulu Adegbero. <laughs> we have the Vice Chancellor Futa, Federal University of Technology Akure, being represented by Professor Adedayo Kayode. 
We have the register of Crawford. Actually, Crawford, they came in full. The register of Crawford is here with us. The university librarian from Crawford is also here with us. We have our deans of the faculties in Angkor University also here present. We have Dean of Faculty of Humanities, Professor Delia Deyonju, followed by the Dean of Science and Science Education, Professor Rogundade, and the Acting Dean Student Affairs, Dr. Ayola. The time is not there to introduce everybody. We have all our Senate members, heads of department, we have our lecturers here, and we have the graduating students. Some parents are also here. I recognize your presence all. But you are looking at me, there's somebody I've not introduced. Who? I have the honor to introduce the Vice Chancellor of Angkor University, <laughs> Professor Joseph Olashe Inde Afolayo. He is the host of our convocation lecturer. That's why I'm introducing last before him. So I have the convocation lecturer here. Is the Vice Chancellor of Vice Chancellors. It was the Executive Secretary of National Universities Commission 20 years ago. And I won't say much because somebody will come to read the citation. So I have the pleasure to introduce Professor Peter Akinshola Okebukola. You are welcome, sir. Please, you allow me to hand over the microphone to the MC. Thank you. Please, uh, a round of applause for the Dep Deputy Vice Chancellor. Thank you. As we progress in this convocation lecture, the maiden convocation lecture of Anchor University, it is my pleasure at this time to invite the Vice Chancellor, who has just been introduced to us now, Professor Joseph Afolayo, to give his introductory remarks. Vice Chancellor, sir. Chancellor, sir, our Father in the Lord, the General Superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry Worldwide. <laughs> and our Mother in the Lord, the wife of our Chancellor, Mommy Esther, you are welcome. <laughs> our eminent guest speaker, distinguished professor, vice chancellor of vice chancellors, <laughs> Professor Kebukala. <laughs> Our BOT chairman, you are welcome, sir. Our pro-chancellor and chairman of council, you are duly recognized. Members of the BOT, members of council, visiting vice chancellors, and their representatives that are here present, other special guests present, principal officers and management members of Angkor University, members of Senate, education secretary, Deeper Life High School, deans and directors, heads of departments, divisions, and units of the university, members of staff, the ever-resourceful anchorites. 
great anchorite. Gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, we especially give glory to God for today's event. About four years ago, we were here with our chancellor, marking the first matriculation of this university. And God has been faithful. He has preserved our lives. Those who matriculated that time, we are seeing them, we are sending them forth now, graduating life and healthy. All the glory be given to God. There's no doubt Anchor University has greatly enjoyed the presence of God in this place. And the reason why the vision of the university has been driven with passion by every member of the institution. The grace of God is available. And where grace is, power is there to do the best for God. Our Chancellor, sir, we especially want to thank you for your prayer support and all the support you have given to us. Daddy, we say thank you, sir. So, our erudite guest speaker of today, I'm excited. We know you as a very busy individual. No wonder you have been introduced as a vice chancellor of vice chancellors. Uh, if you permit me to say this, sir, well, uh, as he came in today, as uh, he was going to his guest room, the first thing is he had a, a virtual meeting. He, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a working committee man. And for him to be present in Angkor today, we especially appreciate you, sir. You are welcome. <laughs> My own is to welcome all of us. I'm not supposed to give any lecture because I am more than convinced that the guest lecturer of today will do more than justice to the lecture he will be giving to us. But let me quickly give us a little highlight of the program of our maiden convocation, starting with what we are doing now. Earlier in the morning, we had press conference by the Vice Chancellor. Now we are having the convocation lecture. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll be having the convocation proper with the awards of degrees and prizes. And uh, the next day, on Saturday, we'll have varieties to occupy our time. And above them all, the day four, there will be great celebration at the Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters in Bagada. <laughs> there, our chancellor, our general superintendent will be showering anointing upon our lives. Yeah. You must be there. And I know you'll be there in Jesus' name. Once again, I thank every one of you for coming. God bless you. Thank you, sir. We are gradually going to the mainstream of today's event. Chancellor, sir, someone will be coming now to talk about the convocation lecturer. So I'm not going to do that job. The Deputy Vice Chancellor has called in Vice Chancellor of Vice Chancellors. But I'm also aware that uh, in certain circles, we know him as Mr. Quality Assurance. <laughs> and of course, perhaps maybe two of us in this um, 
gathering, we also know him as facilitator general. <laughs> well, some others may not fully understand the reason for why the citation is read. Thank you, sir. The Chancellor, sir, and uh, our distinguished guests, and all the protocols here in present, you are all recognized. It, it is my singular honor to read the profile of our distinguished lecturer for this year's made in convocation lecture. I present to you the profile of our lecturer, Professor Peter A. Okebukola. Peter A. Okebukola, OFR, is a distinguished professor of science and computer education at Lagos State University, Nigeria. He had his higher education at the University of Ibadan, where he obtained his bachelor's degree in 1973, followed by master's and PhD degrees in science education in the same university. He had specialized science and technology training at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and Harvard University, both in Cambridge, USA. He is a fellow of the International Academy of Education, and between 1998 and 2007, he was the African representative on the Executive Committee of the International Council of, of Associations for Science Education. He is a fellow of the Science Association of Nigeria, SAN. He is a fellow and president of the Nigerian Association for Environmental Education and fellow and past president of the Science Teachers Association of Nigeria, TEN. He was concurrently the chairman of council of four Nigerian universities. He is currently <laughs> he is currently the chairman of council of National Open University of Nigeria. He's chairman board of trustees Crawford University, chairman board of trustees Caleb University, chairman of council of Samuel Adegboyega University, <laughs> member board of trustees of Bell's University of Technology, Afe Babalola University also, <laughs> and executive chairman of Bukola Science Foundation. Beyond Nigeria, he is on the council and board of regents of six universities across the world, including the Pan-African University owned by the African Union based in Addis Ababa. Between 2001 and 2006, he served as executive secretary of the National Universities Commission. He has been awarded a number of honorary degrees he is the recipient of the national honor of the officer of the Order of the Federal Republic, OFRO. He was chairman of the US-based advisory council of the Chair International Quality Group, CIQG. Between 2001 and 2006, he served as director of the Virtual Institute for Higher Education Pedagogy and co-director of UNESCO Virtual Institute for Higher Education in Africa. He has served as lead facilitator to deliver online training to over 10,000 academics in 62 universities in Africa. He was leader of the e-learning program for federal civil servants in Nigeria, 
involving over 70,000 participants. He has served as team leader of several quality assurance projects involving UNESCO, the, Union, uh, the African Union, the World Bank, Association of African Universities, and the Global University Network for Innovation, Guni Africa. He has been involved in popularizing science in Africa since 1986 and has served as consultant to many African countries in popularizing science, especially among the youth and undeserved communities, notably girls, nomads, and rural dwellers. In 1992, he became the first African in the 42-year history of the prize to win the prestigious UNESCO Kalinga Prize for the communication of science. His research efforts have gravitated around five country, uh, central themes, which are computers in education and e-learning, cooperative learning, metacognitive strategies in science education, environmental education, and eco-cultural influences on the learning of science concepts. These efforts have resulted in over 180 internationally published works and over 200 national and international conference <laughs> presentations. He is the inventor of the cultural techno contextual approach to science teaching and learning that is gaining global acclaim as a tool for breaking barriers to meaningful learning of difficult concepts in STEM. Professor Oke Bukola has served as team leader of several quality assurance projects involving UNESCO, the African Union, the World Bank, Association of African Universities, and the Global University Network for Innovation. Guni, Africa. Sir, you are welcome to today's lecture. The Chancellor. The General Superintendent of uh, the Deeper Life Christian Life Ministry Worldwide. Uh, shall we be seated? Please be seated. Yeah, okay. Uh, mommy, Mommy Esther, Chair, Board of Trustees, Chair of Council, Vice Chancellor, highly distinguished ladies and gentlemen. When uh, the person who read the citation said, I uh, left the University of Ibadan in 1973, uh, I just laughed and I said, uh, I'm a small boy compared with when the general superintendent of Deeper Christian Life Ministry Worldwide left the same university. He had left one million years ago before I entered that university. And did you know that uh, when he left the university, I entered the university about the 1970s, and he had left almost like 50 years before. <laughs> and when he left the University of Ibadan, he was the best graduating student in his department of mathematics. <laughs> that year, ladies and gentlemen, 1967, he was the best graduating student in the whole of that University of Ibadan. <laughs> till tomorrow, till tomorrow, the University of Ibadan, nobody has beaten his record as the best graduate student. So one of the greatest honors that I've received in recent times is to be asked to give the major convocation lecture of this university. I'm deeply grateful to the Senate, to Council, to Board of Trustees, 
and the proprietor and our chancellor for this honor. My special appreciation to the visitor and chancellor, the general superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Pastor Dr. William Folon Shokumuyi, the chairman, board of trustees, the chairman of council, Professor Silas S. Dada, and the vice chancellor, Professor Joseph O. Akolanyo. You know, I must not fail to recognize the large contingent from Crawford University, where I served as chairman, board of trustees, the vice chancellor, and all members of his cabinet, you know, are here. And I also like to appreciate somebody, his record is not, is, will be difficult to beat because he is the vice chancellor in three universities. That's Professor Sam Oyebandele, a member of the Board of Trustees of this great university. I'm very proud of you, as you know, sir. And uh, Nigeria is proud of you. The world is proud of you. The maiden convocation, like the one we're having today, is significant in a number of respects. It is a significant part of the end of the first graduation cycle of an institution. By tradition, those who are part of implementing this cycle typically have their names etched in an indelible part of the history of the institution. The adjective foundation is often reserved for such persons. Second, in the early days of the university in Europe, the first graduation ceremony and associated events, you know, we have four days of uh, rejoicing for Angkor University first graduation uh, ceremony, were often marked with special pomp and pageantry. The king and queen of the city where the university is located will come with a retinue of other neighboring kings, and there is a banquet. Feasting goes on for seven days. This tradition has waned, but the glamour of the first graduation ceremony is anything but lost. You cannot see it, but I can see them. The angels of the Lord are all around us, rejoicing with us today. Second Kings chapter 8. Elisha, you know, kidnapping started several times. So he sent a, a group of bandits to go and arrest Elisha. So Elisha and uh, his servant, not Gehazi, not, not Ge, uh, Gehazi now, another was not named in Second Kings 8, uh, said, oh, these are people from Syria, troops. The little boy was afraid. And Elisha said, relax, my friend, relax. How can I relax? Because all these people coming to capture us, these bandits. So he said, the people that are out there are not a tenth as people that are in here. Uh, the, the little boy said, uh, how can I? I can't see anybody. So it's, then Elisha then said, get into your mind there, your spiritual eye. And then when the spiritual eye of that little boy opened, he saw chariots of fire and angels of the Lord. And uh, the rest is history. So today, the angels of the Lord are here surrounding us and celebrating with us. At the heart of this history-making event are the graduating students. I congratulate them for being worthy holders of the degree of anchor. Just a pity that I, I, I've left the university. I, I will have, uh, uh, I'm jealous, I'm very jealous of you. I will have been uh, one of these graduating students. But not, not to worry, my, my, one of my grandchildren must attend this university. <laughs> and pray that this certificate becomes the key for opening several doors of opportunity in life. Amen. In this lecture, I will review with you major issues that are connected with repositioning our youth for quality leadership so that they can better contribute to national development. First, let me begin with an assessment of this university. Our focus will be on 2020 and 2021. 
I've never been in this university. So I was looking forward to this day. When I entered the gate, I could feel an ambience of Harvard University. I could feel the ambience of a university in Europe. And when I entered, I saw the buildings of excellent quality. And I saw that uh, 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 this is a university that my, not one grandson, many of them and grandchildren will attend. So let's look at the state of Angkor University in 2020. And you see, um, uh, Mr. Ye, 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 Ye is here, who is uh, a very senior staff of the National Investors Commission. You're lucky that the Executive Secretary posted him to represent NUC in the Council of, of Angkor University. While I was in office, he uh, was one of, my, one of the very strong persons. Are you still strong there? Anyway, you did well. You did well in the training we just, which we just concluded. Now, highlights of the report on teaching indicate that, no, I'm going to skip this part because the Vice Chancellor, Professor Folanyo, will be giving you excerpts of it. I'm going to move on to the situation in 2021. Angkor University in the eye of the world in 2021. So before we take on the theme of this lecture, it is worth asking, who do people say you are? What is the public perception of Angkor University in 2021? Well, when I received the invitation to give this lecture, I did a quick survey to answer this question. I probed those who said yes, that they know Angkor University. And I asked them, what, how do you assess Angkor University? And I'm going to ex, 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 extract some quotes from some of my respondents. The first quote is from a permanent secretary in the federal ministry. He said, the university is owned by the deeper Christian life ministry. So it has to be an exemplar for others, since an elephant cannot give birth to a rat. The second respondent said, being a true man of God, the proprietor slash visitor of the university, Pastor Dr. William Follon Shokumuyi, cannot but run a godly university for heaven's sake. There can be no place for the devil in Angkor University. The third person said, the children of my relations are in the university and I'm told that it is superlative in academics and no room for discipline by students and staff. The fourth said, it's a university that will produce leaders that will shape Nigeria for the better in the coming decades. Amen. Now the registrar of uh, Crawford University, I, I asked him because he told me that he came here on uh, some mission uh, was here for one or two days. And I said, what do you see about Angkor University? Oh, he shouted. I said, why did you shout? Say he has not seen a university like this. That the level of, the, of discipline in this university is unmatched. <laughs> At a personal level, ladies and gentlemen, only a few days ago, only a few days ago, I ended the coordination of a one-month quality assurance training uh, the MC did, me, uh, did make a mention of it, program for the Nigerian university system. The program was attended by vice chancellors, directors of quality assurance from Nigeria, from Burundi, and Ghana, and all senior staff of the National Universities Commission. Professor Johnson Fatokun of Angkor University emerged one of the best participants in the program. <laughs> and also the MC, MC, you did very, very well. Attesting to the fact that here in Angkor University, your staff are of superlative quality. <laughs> to conclude my survey, I inquired from NUC, the regulatory agency, and Angkor University is seen at NUC as an emerging frontliner 
with all his 13 programs accredited, with 13 programs in the full category, namely accounting, business administration, English and literary studies, history and diplomatic studies, biochemistry, history, computer science, Mathematics, of course, you have to be, be I maths. If you don't get this in maths, you're in big trouble with our chancellor. <laughs> Microbiology, mass communication, and political science. I'd like you to applaud yourself and thank our <laughs> chancellor for this success story. But you see, the success that we recorded here is not success that is human made because Ankor University is God's own university. It is Christ that will make a cornerstone. And uh, no gate of hell shall come against it. Amen. So congratulations. Let, now let's shift gears to the topic of the lecture, re-engineering the youth for leadership imperatives and national development. By the natural order of things, the young must of necessity succeed the old. Not so. It's an invariant natural cycle. Whether the old ones like it or not, I want to stay perpetually in power like a number of African leaders. Someday, someday, they must have to leave since they cannot live forever. When they leave, the youth will step into their shoes. On February 17th this year, I clocked 70 years by the special <laughs> grace of God. And I had to retire and gladly saw my students and even <laughs> younger, uh, uh, third generation of students, now full professors, take charge of things. The question that is worth addressing within the context of the theme of this lecture is, what attributes have the youth of today for successfully taking over the reins of leadership? What attributes do you have, you youth? Let us begin with some comparisons of the youth of yesterday defined as about four decades ago. I'm going to plot a graph. Four decades ago till today. And the youth of today. Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, about 40 years ago, secondary school and university students that I interacted with across Africa were noted for their acute sense of duty, honesty, slim chance of exhibiting social vices, such as examination of practice and great manifestation of reading culture, sexual immorality and drug, especially alcohol abuse, was minimal. Not that they weren't drinking in those days, though, but that one has more picking play compared with what, has, what is happening now. Now, the projects that are submitted in part fulfillment of a university degree were truthfully carried out without forging data, and plagiarism was low. The leaders of the student union in universities were noted for transparency, financial prudence, and low level of mismanagement of union funds. Female students were hardly into hard lot activities and were largely satisfied with the funds given to them by their parents. Let's march on now, ladies and gentlemen, from about 40 years ago to today, 2021, this year. If we plotted a graph showing trends, we'll find a gradual depreciation in these aspects of youth behavior. Sense of duty of secondary school and university students has taken a dip. Honesty is a rarer commodity, and the level of exam mark practice has jumped several percentage points now assisted by technology. Drug abuse among the youth is an increasing menace that General Buba Marwa, the chairman of NDLA, has decried in recent times. Sexual immorality, now wait for it, even in faith-based institutions, is spiking. Plagiarism of assignments, projects, thesis, and dissertations has assumed unacceptable dimensions thanks to plagiarism software that is keeping it in check. Some four years ago, we did a study of uh, the level of plagiarism of project reports, thesis, dissertations, 
in the Nigerian university system. What did we find? We found that for undergraduate projects, not less than 50% across Nigeria were plagiarized. You know, it's easy to escape that uh, scrutiny of a supervisor. Because in many universities, especially in public universities, where you have so many, an army of undergraduates, maybe 20 or 30, to be supervised by one lecturer, the man who gets tired, the woman who gets so much at that time. So the students will take project reports that have been approved four years ago, type, they, uh, they get it typed, and they submit. And the professor will say, oh, wow, wow, our students are doing very well. Not knowing that they are copy work. But you see, let me give you some interesting examples in education. Uh, the project title is uh, The Status of Biology uh, Teaching in Badagri Local Government. So the person who has plagiarized will forget to change Badagri all over the place. <laughs> so we'll say the status of biology teaching in Ojo Local, uh, in uh, LCD or whatever. And so you find Badagri still dotted the place like that. At the higher degree level, let's take at the master's. The master's will take it by about 15, 20%. And I'll tell you what I mean by plagiarism in a minute. At the PhD level, it's about 5 to 7%. What's plagiarism? Plagiarism is a, you're copying somebody else's work and not acknowledging. And of course, there's a, le there's, there's a threshold level of plagiarism that you must not go beyond. The plagiarism checker if you sent an article for publication in a journal, international journal, they check. If it's more than 10 percent, if the thing returns more than 9 percent, then it's thrown away. They will assume that you have taken too much from some other people's work. So in uh, about four years ago, the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria Universities uh, procured a plagiarism checker, turn it in, the country license. And he said, okay, fine, let us, uh, at, at the end of the meeting, okay, let us even try this, this uh, software. And the acts of vice chancellors will send in the approved PhD thesis of some students from their university. And they check, out of, out of 12, eight were largely plagiarized, and of course, the. Uh, the, the universities had to, the center of the university had to withdraw uh, the certificate. So the, the thing, thankfully, uh, we now have a plagiarism software that is uh, homegrown that the vice president uh, launched some time ago, and this is uh, helping. If not, the trend, that graph, will have been something else. Female students are increasingly into prostitution, and it's no longer a shame to flout gay and lesbian tendencies. Let me throw the parents into the equation because uh, the vice chancellor and the MC uh, welcome the parents. Many parents no longer care about home training of their children. And when they care, it is the exposure of the children to the opposite of the values that were held there in days gone by, such as honesty, fear of God, respect for elders, and satisfaction with the little that you have. Many parents assist their children to commit exam and practice and are quick to beat up the teacher when their children come home to spin some lies about what the teacher did to, uh, to correct their mistakes. This is very rampant, especially in urban centers. The child will come home and will just tell, oh, this teacher did this to me. The parent will... Uh, take the, uh, the the story of the child. Will go to the school, especially the secondary school, and you know harass the teacher and maybe beat up the teacher. The uh, when all these unacceptable trends begin to reverse, and are youth repositioned for high calling for national development and leadership, when will this happen? Now let's look at the role of. Uh, leaders. There's the erroneous notion of the leader being President Buhari alone. See the leader, President Buhari alone. Leadership, Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, has a broader meaning 
to include the role of any person who is elected or appointed to lead an assembly of people. In the school, the class captain is a leader. So are the heads of department uh, that are here, are deans of faculty, chairpersons of committees, principal officers, especially the vice chancellor, chairpersons of council, and the boards of trustees, the chancellor should visit us. We are all leaders. In the home, the father and the mother are leaders. In the private sector, line managers, general managers, directors, and the managing director are leaders. In our churches, leaders are also at different levels, from the local parish to the national or global headquarters. In the bigger community, leaders include our elected representatives at the state and federal level. At each of these levels, Leaders should lead by example and with the fear of God. Now that the exact opposite is playing out, that is, bad examples are given by leaders to the youth, a national reorientation is urgently needed, and more importantly, to pray to God to heal the land. Fruit of the Spirit, urgently needed by our youth. If our youth is to play the much needed role, might I have used the word? I've used the word youth in a collective sense in most part of this. So I didn't say youths. I'm using that in a collective sense. It's, it's like uh, you go to the airport and you say, oh, you can see Arik aircraft, you can see Bell, uh, no, you can see Aero, uh, uh, Dana, and all that. All of these are aircraft. So I know you know. Not so Anchor University students, you know that. You don't say aircraft. Aircraft. Can Anchor University students say that? A aircraft. aircraft. One aircraft. aircraft. Ten. Aircraft. Wonderful. Clap for yourself. You, uh, you know, this is a lecture, lecture, so we have to get to some of these things. So if our youth is to play the much needed role in national development, they will have to display the fruit of the spirit as elucidated in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And I read the King James Version uh, segment. These are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Beyond the theory, theory of these attributes, collectively labeled fruit, which is preached on the pulpit, there ought to be practical display. We must go beyond the theory of the fruit of the Spirit to manifestation through practice. A youth must show practical evidence of love of joy, of peace, of long-suffering, of gentleness, of goodness, of faith, of meekness, and temperance. Now, what are the pathways to re-engineering the youth for leadership imperative? There are several pathways. One is through quality education. Chair, uh, 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 Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, down through the ages, education is known as the major transformative tool for shaping the hands, the heart, and mind of humans. If we deliver education properly, we will be on course to re-engineer Nigerian youth for leadership. The question worth addressing in this connection is, what do we need to change about the delivery of education in Nigeria to assure better quality of our youth? There are several input process and output variables. Uh, I, I can see that uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that we need to change. I will address a few of these variables. Let's take curriculum. We need to re-engineer the curriculum at all levels in a way that will lead to the development of knowledge, of skills, and attitudes that we desire of leaders and persons who will contribute optimally to national development. Emphasis should be placed on the acquisition of 21st century skills and core values, core values of honesty, love of country, fear of God, and abhorrence of corruption. It's a delight to report, I'm very happy to report this development, that the National Investments Commission, under the leadership of Professor Abubakar Damo Rashid, is taking bold steps to achieve these goals 
for the Nigerian university system. As Ankara University staff are aware, before the end of this year, the re-engineered curriculum for Nigerian universities will be out and will be on course to start producing a brand, uh, a brand of graduates of our dream in the next four years. Let's look at facilities. The facilities at all levels, all levels, in most public schools are not disposing for quality teaching and learning and cannot effectively lead us to produce youth who anticipate to be great leaders. Many primary schools, uh, school pupils, sit on the floor or under trees for classes. Less than 5% of all the schools in Nigeria can guarantee 24 hours of electricity. Equipment for teaching and learning are acutely in short supply. And toilet facilities are a disgrace in most schools, even in many universities. There's a need for a massive overhaul of the facilities in the entire school system in order to have a conducive environment for training future leaders. Let's look at teachers. We need quality teachers for training the youth for leadership, to, for leadership positions, and to be properly skilled for national development. Such teachers are very thin in rank, as many are poorly trained and poorly motivated. You'll expect that there should be a gradient in the knowledge of the teacher of maths, of physics, of chemistry, Christian religious studies, whatever subject. The greater it means that teacher should be here in terms of the knowledge that he or she knows. The students should be lower. But what do we find is the reverse. When you when we go observe teachers in the Nigerian in the Nigerian school system, we are amazed. You see the teacher of biology, of chemistry, of maths come and be solving some questions. And the people say, oh, no, no, teacher, that one are wrong. The second step, wrong. And the teacher will be doing both face. Shut up, my friend. <laughs> you know, our teachers have very, very low content knowledge. The teachers, a, teacher, a, a, a teacher's preparation rests on three knowledge bases. The first is the content knowledge. That's the knowledge of your biology, of your chemistry, of your physics, of your uh, a Greek, like we see uh, Crawford University. The other is pedagogic knowledge. That's knowledge of how to teach, how to use the chalkboard, how to read lesson plans, how to manage a class. The third is a merger of the two, and it's called pedagogic content knowledge. That's the knowledge of how to teach your chemistry, how to teach your geography, how to teach your mathematics. On all these knowledge bases, our teachers are, are flawed. I'm not being absolute. There are several bright teachers, but I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the model. It's important for the, the model, the, 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 uh, uh, the frequently occurring uh, group. Such teachers are attaining rank and are poorly motivated. We need to rethink our teacher education program to strengthen these three knowledge bases and implement the juicy conditions of service. You know, President Muhammad uh, Buhari has... Uh, instituted or approved this very wonderful policy for our teachers. Uh, the conditions should be applied countrywide with a plea to state governors to implement implement same faithfully. Let's look at curriculum delivery. What was the meaning of curriculum delivery? You have this curriculum which will come out from NUC towards the end of the year. And the curriculum is expected to be delivered, that means taught to the students. So teaching and learning uh, part of this curriculum delivery set. Now, the manner of delivering the curriculum in many Nigerian schools is grossly deficient. Interactivity is low as teachers employ the lecture as the predominant mode. At a pandemic-induced time like this, when online teaching and learning is gaining visibility, many teachers are still stuck in the analog mode. We need to put in place the correct mix of variables that will assure better curriculum delivery, including better ICT infrastructure and upgrading of the knowledge and skills of teachers. I'm pleased to inform you of the release in 2015 that was mentioned 
uh, what I was being introduced, of a homegrown technique for the effective delivery of the STEM curriculum known as the cultural techno contextual approach, CTCA. CTCA has been shown in several African countries to break down the barriers to meaningful learning of science and other, uh, other subjects. For details of this technique, how to use it, uh, studies that have confirmed its effectiveness, I refer you to a, a, a site, www.ctcapproach.com. We have developed a mobile app, which you can get on your, for your Android or iPhone device, and you find that tool, it's homegrown, to be exceedingly effective. I'm going to join a, a jump a little of this. Let, let's go on to the rule of the family. Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a menace that is affecting our nation is how casually we see the family as a training ground for developing value-oriented leaders. We should understand that the family is the bedrock of our society. And it is only strong families that can build strong communities, which in turn can build a strong Nigeria. It is in the family that our young people must first learn moral and spiritual values which give meaning to their lives. While I was growing up, when in my family, at the age of uh, one year, you join a regime, it's a family tradition of fasting, the first day of the, of the, of the month, a year old, you are not given any food until 9 a.m. When you are about five years, you cannot break your fast until 12 noon. When you are 10 years, you cannot break your fast until you are about 3 p.m. Beyond that, you break your fast. It's not just starving ourselves, but we are in prayers. We, every hour, every, th every three hours, the family gets together and we pray. And this, in most families, this, this doesn't exist again. I didn't like it while growing up, especially by 5 a.m. when uh, we be woken up. Baba <laughs> wake us up. Oh, yeah, come, well, come for prayers. And that is when sleep, you know, devil, that's when sleep will be catching you well. well. But of course, my father, a uh, policeman, will not, oh, yeah, my mother, all of you come, you know. And it, it, they will insist. Those of us who, who, who will make like this, we are the one to pray, we are the one to pray. And during that family worship, my parents will pick a core value, core family value, and explain to us. 4 a.m. in Lagos, all the parents are already on their way to Lekki, to Victoria Island, to everywhere. What in the prayers now? Pity. Parents and guard, uh, guardians cannot expect schools to take over their primary responsibility for molding their children to be better persons and God-fearing leaders. You know, when I, uh, when I left, uh, when I got to University of Ibano, I, I got led by the Spirit that, look, this one day thing, don't let it be only one day. The first three days, the first three days of the month, committed to God in fasting and prayer. So when some people, some people ask me, ah, Pastor, okay, because I was this the secret of my success. My friend, very simple though. The secret of my success is the great God of heaven and earth that I come to every first three days. I spent the first day, let me tell you the thing. My, the first day of the month, like July 1st, my fasting and prayer session, I would thank God for every day of the previous month of June. Take the day one by one. Undeserved mercies, undeserved favor. Do you think it's because you are smart that you are alive today? Our general superintendent is 80 years plus one month today. <laughs> Look at Baba, he's stronger than I, than I am. <laughs> you think it's, uh, you know, many of the people I, I grew up with in the University of Baba are no more with us. And they will say, oh, 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 don't eat this one. Cholesterol day there. Jog every day. Jog, jog, jog. Do this thing, this thing. And no more with us. It is this grace of God that keeps us. I must continue to draw from that fountain of grace. Second day, what do I do? Second day, second of July, 
I take the day one by one. It may take me two hours or three, I don't care. But I take, God, look, July 2nd. I don't know the next second. My great friend and brother, Professor Ibida Kobe, I just woke up to learn that he has passed. So all the other people, you see, God, you can't solve arithmetic. There, there's one equation that we used to solve in chemistry class in UI. It's called Schrodinger's equation. Very difficult equation to solve. You can't subject uh, this thing, God, to any equation. Do this. Uh, God has his own way. He, he, he loves who he wants to love. And you have to stay at the center of his will to be able to derive those benefits. So, first, uh, second day, I take this, uh, July 2nd, God, first, the next minute, I don't know, the next hour, I don't know, the whole day, I don't know. Third of July, fourth of July, I do that to the end of July. Devil go run away. Third of July, third of July, I then take the third of July alone. Not to talk about the other daily uh, devotion. Today, many youths are growing up without any guidance, mentors, or role models. I've seen parents helping their children pass public exams by enrolling them in miracle centers. We have seen parents teaching their lives, they teach their children to lie. Because they lie also. We have seen parents, uh, we are only training young people that we engage in stealing, in cheating, in cultism. You need to trace the family background of the cultist. You find that their parents or their uncles, they are into all these stupid cults. So they, yeah, they are also, uh, also in there. Exam my practice, sexual promiscuity, indecent and obscene mode, mode, mode of dressing, and forgery of certificate. Uh, did you know that when parents, especially those very rich ones, in a, a private school, especially around Lagos, uh, during the, 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 after secondary education, they send their children to Europe and North America for university education. When I have an opportunity of talking with them, I said, look, why don't you keep these children here under your watch? Send them to Angkor University. Send them to universities around where you can monitor them. They say, no, 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 they send their children. The moment these children, you know, the age, the, the age band is a period of uh, period where they can be manipulated. So within a few months, these children are into something else. And the parents will not know. They will phone the, the child and say, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing very well. The, the boy may be in one brothel or some, 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 some someplace else. So I always entreat the parents, even if you have to send your, your children overseas, uh, try to see how you, how you monitor them. And of course, you enter a place and you see all this much more. You know, stolen money gets you mad. In the first class cabin, first class compartment, you see the, all these small, small children in the place. And I say, look, I know you have all this money. Why, why, why don't you, you know, train your child to be able to learn, uh, to, to learn how the poor man like me or like Pastor Kolo, you know, <laughs> live. <laughs> Let them be business class or economic class. They only concern you. Yeah, they have the money. So you see all this, you know, the entire first class is filled with all these small, small children. We have a lot of challenge in this, uh, in this country. We all must realize that Nigeria consists of communities and family, com cons families constitute communities. Therefore, the stability of the nation depends on how stable or robust the families are, and consequently, the communities, and consequently, the communities. Parents and guardians, remember, of course you know this, Proverbs 22 says, train a, a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Let's look at the role of religious institutions. Our religious institutions are not only for developing our young people spiritually, there's a need to also focus on developing them for leadership. 
There's no better institution to trigger a revival of values in our young people than the church. The church should encourage young people to harness all their God-given talents to contribute their quota towards national development and move the nation out of the current economic challenges. The church must create platforms for youth engagement. We are grateful, very grateful, for a Deeper Life Bible Church 2020 conference where young people were encouraged to emerge beyond the current challenges and live beyond overwhelming societal, economic, cultural, and generational limitations. Yeah, thank you for clapping for that event. It's, it, it's, it's a flagship event, and more of such events are urgently needed by religious institutions, especially our churches. I've also identified the role of the media. You have, the, the, you have uh, copies of the address. I'm going to skip this. I've also talked about political participation. I've talked about participation in business and entrepreneurship. Mind how I pronounce that word. And this is entrepreneurship. I pronounce that entrepreneurship. As students, I want you to pronounce that entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Uh, one more time. Very good. You know, this is a lecture. May I go teach you this thing? <laughs> By the way, there's a test. When, when, when I finish, there's a test for all of you. I'm giving you a test. Uh, Liberia, you're afraid already. Don't worry. Uh, it's only for the students. Only for the students. I also talk about political participation. Participation, okay, I've done that. Uh, I'm skipping quite a bit. I uh, looked at the role of civil society organizations, and then let me begin to conclude on character, competence, and courage. I'm thrilled by the three core values of Angkor University, character, competence, and courage. Without character, Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, laced with competence and delivered with courage, the products of our school system will be capable of meeting the needs of society. If our universities are to train graduates having these attributes, half of the battle of good leadership for Nigeria will have been won. If I had my way, I would ask Elizabeth University, Crawford University, all the, all the universities in Nigeria, 196 of them, to include these three attributes. They will have to pay Angkor, though. have to pay Angkor some money. <laughs> these three attributes. In their values. Our perilous times here, as I listen to global, national, and local news every day, I'm left to wonder if the day will ever dawn where we'll see a decline in the manifestation of ill behaviors among the citizenry, especially our youth. By the day, it's a case of worsening, worse, getting worse by the day. Scenarios as crime rates and unacceptable practices keep rising. Perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, the perilous times of the last days are here. As Apostle Paul warned in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 4. And I'm reading the King James Version. This also know, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men, using generically now, men and women shall be lovers of their own selves. Is that happening? Yes. Covetous. Is that happening? Yes. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Is that happening? Yes. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. You can see no natural affection. Man and man. Woman and woman. Ah, the world is, is terrible. Uh, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Is that happening? You know, on Sundays, when people should go and worship, uh, either online or in assembly of, of persons, physically on site, you find people, uh, you know, all over the place, Go to Ikeja, you go, the people are selling, buying and selling, and all of that. So, if you walk down the streets of Ayobo, of Aba, of Abuja, 
of Kano. You will find such persons that are listed as captured in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 4 in large numbers. One can speculate that the ranks of such people will swell in the coming years. Do you agree with that speculation? That the ranks will swell? Yes. What is the solution? The solution, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen, is to pray for the Holy Spirit to take control. It is for our spiritual leaders and parents, indeed all Nigerians and all citizens of the world, to seek the face of God to heal the land. In this lecture, I'm concluding now, we examine how different stakeholders can re-engineer the youth for leadership. Dear graduating students of this prestigious university, remember that you must be like Noah, who show that leaders do what is right, even if they are alone. You must emulate Abraham, father of faith, a leader who embraced the unknown with faith in God. You must not forget to emulate Joseph, who endured despite various difficult circumstances. You must stand up for your people like Moses and rule by example like Joshua. You must be like David, who was not afraid of giants. You must be like Daniel, who maintained his resolve without regard for consequences. You must be like Deborah, who rose in her time as a worthy judge and prophetess in Israel. You must be like John the Baptist, who was bold, and a Lord Jesus Christ, who showed that leaders can be servants. You must be like Peter, who recovered from his failure. Oh, that's, that's my other Peter. <laughs> and finally, like Paul, who was passionate in what he believed in. As I close, I wish to extend my congratulations to students who will be graduating tomorrow, Friday, July 9, 2021. During the course of the ceremony tomorrow, and I, by God's special grace, I'm going to celebrate that day with you. It's going to be glorious. When our Chancellor confers the degree on you in person or by proxy, you are no longer referred to as graduates, but as graduates. Let me tell you the difference between the two words. Uh, in the early days of the university, when the person uh, who is to graduate is coming in, is a graduate, uh, he or she will have the tassel. This one is the tassel, or this one, this rope. You have to have it on the right. That's, that means you are not a graduate yet. You are just a graduate. When the chancellor, when you come, when you come up to the chancellor and the chancellor says, uh, meet you, 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 you know about the twinkling of an eye. Twinkling of an eye. Like rapture. Eh? <laughs> twinkling of an eye. That is exact twinkling of an eye. As soon as the chancellor says, I admit you, you automatically transform from being a graduate to being a graduate. So tomorrow... You know, the, 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 the chancellor will say, I admit you all. And then after that, you have to move your tassel from the right to the left. So when you see somebody, when the graduate is putting this one, those are Bushman, putting this one here. <laughs> but me, I know you Bushman, that's what I'm having. It's right here uh, on, the, on, the, on the left. As you turn your tassel tomorrow, God will turn you in the direction for a glorious future. You will be leaders in Nigeria, Amen. in Africa, Amen. and the world. Amen. God will grant your heart's desires for a good wife or husband. Amen. Children, Amen. grandchildren, Amen. good job, Amen. good placement for postgraduate degrees. Amen. And most importantly, when your travel days are over, Christ will give you a place and I in his great kingdom. Dear parents, you will live to see and serve the joy of these success stories of your children. Amen. Nobody will stand in your place on the days of their celebrations. Amen. Once again, I appreciate the honor of this invitation to give this lecture, and may God continue to bless our efforts. Thank you.
can do better than that. More of that. More of that. Thank you. Please, let's be seated. We'd like to appreciate the convocation lecturer for that sumptuous meal he has just treated us to. If you have followed through this presentation, you will take note of those vital points for re-engineering the youth. And so many young people that are here, I believe you have taken note of the message that has been passed across. I pray you will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. Once again, let's put our hands together for the lecturer. Thank you. On this note, I will once again like to invite the Vice Chancellor. He will be speaking on behalf of the Chancellor today. Of course, you know, tomorrow is still there. I'm sure you are waiting for something greater tomorrow. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. But for today, I will invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Joseph Afolayo, to present the remarks on behalf of our, Vice, of our Chancellor. Thank you. <laughs> My assignment is very highly intimidating. <laughs> I wish there is another way of doing it, but I have no choice. But I'm glad when Baba gives me assignment, there is power behind me. Yeah. So on the authority of that anointing, I will speak. Our distinguished guest speaker, this is not a vote of thanks, but appreciating your potential. We, as a university, we have not made a mistake. You are the round peg in the round hole. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Chancellor. His spirit is inside me to speak. <laughs> so, <laughs> you will permit me to talk. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, you see, this lecture is not just one of the lectures we, we take like that as one of those things. It's a lecture for us to sit down meditate and see how we can apply for a change. The title of the lecture was by inspiration and we can see the evidence of inspiration in the delivery. So it is our prayer that all of us as we have heard will go home with lessons that are applicable. Lessons that will help our community for a change. If all the number of people who are here today will take these lessons very seriously and we apply, Nigeria is transformed. Amen. We pray that the Almighty God will help each and every one of us to take it in very deeply with serious application. On behalf of the Chancellor, I believe tomorrow will be a greater day. Amen. You will hear him speak. Amen. When he speaks, his words will stay in your life. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, for that uh, very brief remarks. 
we are getting to a, a close. Before we give the vote of thanks, please permit me once again to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor to introduce a few other persons that uh, came in after the first introduction. The DVC, sir. Actually, it's, it was an omission. I was seeing Baba here, I, you know, like father, like children. I didn't know he was the one sitting down here, and uh, I didn't introduce him. We have one of our big pastors in Lagos who had accompanied Baba to come here, Pastor John Akinwande. You are welcome, sir. And then close to him is uh, one of our invited guests too, is seated here. I know there are others in the con uh, congregation that have not noticed. Please, you are all recognized. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. At this moment, I will be inviting the acting registrar of Anchor University, Pastor Moses Salami. So please move the vote of thanks. Our Father in the Lord and the General Superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, the Chancellor and Proprietor of Anchor University, our guest lecturer of today, and the Vice Chancellor of uh, Chancellors, the Chairman of the BOT, and other members of the BOT here present, the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council and other council members who are here present. Our visiting vice chancellors and the principal officers who came particularly from Crawford University. This is the second time you are coming. We appreciate you. <laughs> Our pastor from Lagos, we spoke a number of times we are very glad that we are here even today. The deans of the faculties, heads of departments, our great graduates and anchorites, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is a, one of the greatest days in the life of Anchor University. Uh, not only because the guest speaker is here, uh, as I look at him and I heard what he has said, uh, I know we have learned a lot. But most importantly that our Father and the Lord is here. Uh, even without speaking, I believe that merely seeing him, a lot of things have been deposited. into our lives. Uh, we look at him at a distance when he will be preaching or through the internet. But in this small place, you can see what great privilege we have to have him even before us. We are very grateful, sir. Without God and him, we cannot be here in Angkor University. So we appreciate that, apart from the mission, the ministry that God committed into his hand, that he has extended even to the educational sector. The Lord will continue to help you, sir. We appreciate you very deeply. Uh, let me say one thing, sir. 
I'm always thrilled when we bring people here as professors, speakers. And then when I discover that they are godly people, godly people, it's always very challenging that, you see, the youth of today, they think it is when you live careless lives and anything goes, that is when you can make it in life. Uh, this is an example. This is an example. You can see the old lecture that was filled with godly statements, godly examples. Uh, we, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are encouraged, sir. You are a model to us uh, who are coming behind. That one can be godly and then can really actually get up by the grace of God. Thank you for the humility and for honoring to come here. Uh, I must say that the chairman of the board of trustees and the members of the board of trustees have helped this university a great deal. Uh, the chairman, sir, you have done a lot uh, for us with your members. We are very grateful. <laughs> pardon me for a great omission that I've made. Uh, please pardon me. And that is regarding our mommy. Uh, mommy, ma, uh, I've had opportunity uh, to read with you on phone a number of times. Uh, I wanted to come. He said, no, 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 don't come. What do you want to say? And I said it. I said, no, no problem, no problem. We are going to help you. It's with respect to our advertisement in the Women Mirror. Uh, Women Mirror helped us a lot. And through that advertisement, you know, uh, Angkor University went everywhere. And that has actually helped our enrollment. We are very, very grateful, ma. And very recently, very recently, very recently, uh, you know what you did for us, ma. We are very grateful that you even took pain to come all the way from your office and then walking on the public like that, inspecting what was going on. Uh, we appreciate you very much, ma. Thank you very much, ma. To our council, led by the pro chancellor, Professor S.S. Dada, uh, we thank you very much for how you have managed the affairs of this university for the past four years. Uh, we had uh, the last uh, validatory council meeting on the 25th of this month, and you could see how the members of council were actually appreciating your leadership. Thank you very much for providing an exemplary leadership for council and for allowing God to use you to take council, I mean university, to this uh, level. Uh, to our vice chancellor, where uh, I should not say anything about you and the principal officers, but you know your handwork. That's what has taken us to this level. We thank you very much. And then for our deans, our professors, our professor Banjoko, uh, when they were introducing the deans, you were not on seat. Uh, that is Professor S. A. Banjoko. He is the Dean of the Faculty of Social Management Sciences. Uh, he's one of our responsible uh, leaders in the university who is like the chairman of the deans. And uh, very humble, very diligent, a man of over maybe 75 years. Uh, he's even stronger than myself. Uh, so God is helping him. And uh, we thank you very much. The other deans, you are seated there. Uh, Professor Ban, uh, Arukundade, and uh, Dinyaju. Now, for our HODs, uh, without you, what we are doing today cannot be possible. We thank you very much. And for our students, great anchorites. Yeah. Great anchorite yeah. of the greatest anchorites. Yeah. You can only be great if Jesus, the greater one, is in your heart. And that is what we have been teaching. That is what our Father and the Lord has been teaching. That is what the guest speaker has emphasized several times today. I pray God will help you to imbibe what we are teaching you in addition to the academic learning. You go places in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your support. Without you, we cannot get to where we have reached now. And we pray those who are coming behind you, they will do much, much better uh, than you. 
Once again, the Chancellor, sir, another protocol duly observed. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. As we go back, the Lord will take you back safely. As we are here, please, tomorrow, let's uh, come to the auditorium. There are greater things are awaiting you there. Thank you very much for your coming. God bless you all. Thank you, sir, acting registrar. Shortly, we shall be taking the closing prayer. But before we do that, after the event today, we will want our invited guests, the council members, and the, the pastors, and the visiting vice chancellor, to please join us on the, the fourth floor of this building for a cocktail session, where we direct you um, as appropriate. We, after the closing prayer, we'll be taking the national anthem. The first, we'll take the Anchor University anthem, and then we'll take the national anthem. Then after that, um, I'll be inviting a few persons to join our general superintendent and our chancellor for a session of photograph. Um, the rest of us, we go out to have the group photograph. Please let take, take note of that. So at this time, please join me to welcome the chair, board of trustee, Anchor University, Pastor Philip Oluwi, to give us the closing prayer. Shall we close our eyes to prayer? Father, we want to thank you for this joyful occasion. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have used to make this event to happen. I want to thank you, Lord God, for our Chancellor, our Father in the Lord, who conceived this vision. Thank you, Lord God, for spearing his life. Thank you, Lord God, for upholding and keeping him. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace that has also sustained him. Lord, accept our praise and gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. We also want to thank you, Lord God, especially for our convocation lecturer, for the wisdom you are giving unto him to deliver such a wonderful paper like this. Thank you, Lord God, for the in-depth of knowledge you have also given unto him. Lord, accept our praise and gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have listened and we have heard. We pray the grace to carry out all that you have learned at this convocation lecture you give unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we commit unto you the graduate students that as they go out into the world, like, O oh Lord God, the Congregation Lecturer said, they be like Noah's who will stand and stand alone for God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like Abraham, who will not be afraid to do and to obey whatever your command is in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we are praying, they will shine for you. Amen. Your glory will rest upon them. Amen. And the power of God will be revealed in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Loving Father, we want to pray for our Congregation Lecturer. You are using him today. Use him more. Yeah. Lord, greater opportunities open up for him in Jesus' name. Yeah. Greater knowledge. Greater wisdom. Give unto him in Jesus' name. Yeah. And Lord, good earth. Give unto him in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the courage to always speak the truth. Lord, grant unto him in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And for our Chancellor, Father, Keep him for us. Amen. Lord, preserve him for us. Amen. Lord, uphold him for us. Amen. That more and more, oh Lord God, he will do in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. And for every one of us, oh Lord, as we depart to our various places, 
go with us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we convey tomorrow, Lord, bring us here safely in Jesus' name. Amen. And in all that you do, Lord, let your glory, Lord, be manifested in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered us. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, sir. Please, let's remain standing as we take the university's anthem.
Anchorites. Thank you very much. We have come to the uh, end of this session. Please, tomorrow is the day. Um, let's uh, mix ourselves available. I want to invite the uh, Chair BOT and uh, the Deputy. Oh, okay, please, let's have a seat, please. Let's have a seat. Nobody, nobody should go out, please. Please, until the Chancellor leaves. Then, please, I want the uh, Chair BOT and uh, the Pro Chancellor to please come forward to join the Chancellor and the guest uh, lecturer and the Vice Chancellor for the group photography. Please come, sir. And, Mommy, Ma, please come. <laughs> I also invite Pastor Akin Wandi as well. That's fine, please. Other council member can please come and quickly join. That's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, let's go to have a seat. The photographers. Please, we'll be having the other part of the photographs outside. So please, we're all going to be seated where we are until the, our Father in the Lord and other members of the leaves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are leaving. They are leaving now. Nobody should stand, please. Everybody should remain seated. Yeah, we are, we are beginning the recession now. Please clear the way. Please give way there. Please let's go back to our seats.